Well, it's about 25 to 5 on a Friday afternoon, and I think you know what that means. It means it's time to talk money with Luke Smith from Envision Financial. Good afternoon. How are we? We good? Super good. It's a Friday afternoon, right. and even better than that, the sun is shining, the sky is blue, and it's looking good for the weekend. Do you know what? Looking out this window, I don't know what that blue stuff is. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> I'll tell you, every Friday we sit here looking at dreary grey skies, a bit of wind. You know, even the magpies look upset. So. Yeah. No, today it's still got yeah. the wind. It's very, yeah. very breezy outside today, but uh, lovely really blue nice. sky, good sunshine. Went for a nice stroll after lunch. Very nice indeed. Beautiful. Yes, winter's almost behind us. Not quite. Oh, I'm pretty sure. Know. I'm convinced there'll be at least one more last blast of super cold weather between now and when spring actually starts. We're here to talk about money today, and today we're talking about that perennial topic, how do I start a pension from my super fund? Because at some point in your life, you will reach the, reach the stage when you think, you know what, I'm going to hang up my spurs yep. and I'm going to start drawing a pension from all that money that I've Correct. accumulated over the years. But then, of course, the question arises, well, how do I actually do that? Yeah, and look, that I, I thought this would be quite topical this week because I've had three or four people in the office this week and say, right, okay, but how do we do this? Yes. Like, I know I want to finish and I know I've been saving in a super and we've been in accumulating mode for many, many years and we sort of hit that, that T in the section of, right, do I keep working or do I take it as a pension? And it, it sort of, surprises, well, it surprises me in some ways that people walk in and go, okay, so now I just rip it all out of super and I do something with it. And I say, well, if you want to pay some tax in your own name, sure. Mm. How about we just start a pension? We make it all tax free and then you can take out whatever you want, whenever you want. Well, that's interesting because <laughs> in the old days, if I remember correctly, basically, when it was time for your super payout, you just got a big chunk of money and off you went. But it's mm. not that simple anymore. Well, again, you can do that if you want, and that's and that's totally fine. And I guess, you know, as we say most weeks, start with why and come backwards. Yeah. And you've been accumulating tax effectively or through your employer yeah. over your working life, and now you say, okay, instead of putting it in, I'd like to take some out. So when we think about that, there are certain pieces of legislation that we have to meet and there are certain forms and behaviours we have to undertake to bring that pension to life. One big misconception is, oh, all of my assets are gonna get sold and then they go over here. Nothing happens in relation to the underlying assets that you have in your super fund. So if you've got $500,000 in your super fund and it's all in Commonwealth Bank shares, for the sake of the example. When you go to your super fund, you say to the fund, hey, Mr. Super Fund, I'd like to start an income stream, please, in the form of a pension. And what the fund will say is, dear Mr. Smith, are you at an age under legislation that lets you take your money out of super? And depending on the year that you're born, anybody born after 1965, that preservation age is 60. It moves from 55 to 60, depending on the year, but anybody born after 1965, you can jump straight to, you can't get it unless you're 60. Now, there are some anomalies for the CSS and PSS listeners that are blowing up saying, I can get it at 55. Yes, you can, mm. but we're talking about lump sums here. Yeah. Um, so you play under a slightly different set of rules, so let's not confuse the two. So you write to your funny and say, yes, I have retired. I'm over 60 and a form of employment has ceased. Right. If you're under 60, you say to the fund, I have retired, and the form says, I do not intend to return to work for more than 10 hours a week in the future. Okay, you meet that condition of release, i.e. retirement under the legislation, and they say to you, Mr. Smith, how would you like to take your money? And one big misconception here is, I find people hear the word pension, and they think like the age pension. Yeah. I have to have it every fortnight. In actual fact, the process of starting a pension is the hardest part of the administration to do with that side of things. Right to the fund, tick the box, I've retired, can I start an income stream please? When would you like it? You can have it however you want it. You want it fortnightly, and your fund allows you to take it fortnightly, do that. You want it monthly, quarterly, half yearly, annually, however you decide to take it to fund the way that you live using the assets that you have, you must ensure that you take at least the legislated minimum for your age. And at the moment, anybody under 65, that minimum is 2%. 
it's normally 4%, but because of COVID, the government have applied a 50% discount. Yeah. They did it last year, they're doing it this year, they did the same in the GFC. Yeah. So as long as you take the minimum amount required under the legislation, everything inside that pension account is tax-free. Now that means all of the earnings are tax-free, anything that comes out to you over 60 is tax-free. So it's a very, very effective way of holding assets that has limited impact on your broader tax position. Yeah. And you've still got control over all of the underlying investments that you've held in there. So it's a very, very good way of accumulating assets and then drawing on them in a, in a, in a, in a way that suits the way you want to live. So recapping, uh, throughout your working life, you've been putting money into your super fund. And when it comes time to pull a pension out of it or an income out of that fund, you're not cashing out the fund. You're not taking money from that fund and putting it into a different fund and so forth. It's still the same fund. Mm -hmm. It's just that instead of putting money in, you're starting to take money out. Spot on. That's exactly right. So there's no fundamental need to... You can change providers if you wish. Yeah. And this will then come down to the strategic control that you want to have. Some funds let you say, I can invest in these things. Other funds let you invest in four things. Other funds let you invest in a menu of a thousand different things. So how you want to control your assets is very, very important. How you want to be able to generate income is very, very important. But structurally, the process of starting an income stream doesn't involve huge withdrawals. It doesn't involve huge transfers to another area unless you choose to. Yeah. It's simply telling your fund, hey, I'm going to take off the accumulation hat <clears throat> and I'm going to put on the pension hat. Yeah. And money's now going to come out to me in a way that I want. Now, the idea, of course, is uh, an income stream. So you get a regular periodical payment. But like you said, the period can be whatever you like. It can be yep. fortnightly, monthly, whatever the case yep. might be. Correct. What if you want to do something like a combination of things? You want to take a, a large-ish lump sum yep. as well as start a regular income. For example, you might yep. have still some money to pay off on your mortgage. Yep. You might want to pull out a chunk to do that so that you no longer have to worry about servicing the bank. And then after having paid that commitment, then also go on to have that regular income? Look, great idea, great question. And again, anything can be achieved because it comes back to what do you need? So if you turn around to your fund and say, hey, I owe 50,000 on the house, I'd love to pay that off. Can I have 50,000? Now you can take that as a lump sum. You could also take that as a pension payment. The important thing to remember here is how it's treated from an admin perspective is important because if you need to take 2% or 4%, depending on your age or the time of the legislation, you might treat the minimum in that example, say you had a million dollars, you've got to take $40,000 out, you need 50 to pay off your house. You might say, give me a $50,000 pension payment. Now you've met your legislated minimum. Now give me 500 bucks a fortnight or a thousand bucks a fortnight, because that's what I want to have as some running around money, taking into account rent from properties, income from a spouse, pension from a spouse, or wherever else you may be drawing money from, you can definitely cut it, slice it, and, and have it any way you want it in relation to meeting your objectives and your needs to be able to extinguish debt, pay for school fees, buy yourself a car, cover your day-to-day -day costs. Buy a boat. Buy a boat. <laughs> buy a bigger Jeep. The only way we're gonna go overseas <laughs> is in your own boat yeah, at the moment. Correct. Now, uh, but here's, here's another curly one. What if I want to do all this, take money out to pay off my mortgage, take a regular income to bolster my, my as you call it, walking around expenses. Um, but I also want to go and do a bit of part-time work. Can I do that as well? Yeah, you can. Again, we've got to come back to the legislation and say, what was the declaration that I signed? If I'm under 60 and I've said, oh, I don't intend to ever work again, it's very hard to go back into work two weeks later if you didn't intend to get a job. Mm -hmm. That's not in the spirit of the legislation. Yeah. So the word intend is pretty broad. Um, I intend to do a lot of things, but <laughs> some of them come <laughs> I intend reason. to lose weight, but uh, I'll tell you what, <laughs> you I wouldn't me. guarantee it. <laughs> you, you and me both. Um, where you're over 60, you could say, all right, I've, I've ceased being gainfully employed over here, I start a pension, and a week later you go and get another job. That's fine because the legislation for retirement over 60 says, a form of gainful employment. In that example, you could have two jobs. Yeah. Quit one, start a pension from your super, make everything tax-free, and keep doing some work over here. That's completely fine. And that's what I think people need to keep in mind. 
This is about using the tools that you have and the, the wealth that you've created through Suma for you to be able to do the things you want to do. Because a lot of people are telling me in meetings now, well, I don't really want to finish altogether because we can't travel, I can't go overseas, yeah. holidays are limited, I may or may not be able to get to my holiday anyway at the moment. Well, I'll just keep doing a few days here or I'll get a contract over there, I might do three months next year here. What people need to keep in mind is you can have your cake and eat it too, provided that you meet certain minimum legislative requirements. You can then, you know, pat the cat, because you yeah. can't skin the cat anymore, you've got to pat the cat. <laughs> you can pat the cat any way you want. Okay, so there's more than one way to pat the cat, right. <laughs> yeah, I learned that this week, not allowed to say skin the cat. Um, yeah, Times have changed, haven't they? Exactly. Very much so. Um, but again, this is what people need to keep in mind. It's not this or that. It's not you must do this and you must do that, or you have to have it like this, or you have to have it like that. Yeah. You can really have it any way you want, provided that the fund that you're in allows you to have those flexibilities and the vast majority of good funds do. So it's, it's, it's something to keep in mind that it doesn't have to be fortnightly, it doesn't have to be one off, you can have lump sums as well as pensions, as long as you are over your preservation age for super and you meet the minimum requirements in relation to the minimum that you draw each year, you can take it basically however you want. You could even, how about this one? What if you took a pension out before June and then used that money to put money back into super after you've quit to reduce the tax on, say, a government pension. Goodness gracious me, CSS, that's tricky. PSS. So again, it's strategically, there are a lot of flexibilities yeah. to starting a pension that may have nothing to do with funding your lifestyle because you don't need the money. But I find everybody loves a tax deduction. So if you are, in your example, back doing some work mm -hmm. and you can take money out of a tax-free pension and put it back into super and get a tax deduction with that money and keep working, what a great outcome. So it's about thinking outside the box and saying, why would I start one? Do I need the money? Mm -hmm. Is there a tax saving? Moving from 15% tax to zero is very advantageous. Selling assets with no capital gains, very advantageous. So there are a number of strategic structural benefits that you can take advantage of that have nothing to do with actually funding the way that you live because yeah. you may have more money than you need anyway but you can still sharpen the pencil a touch and avoid unnecessary tax liabilities in some situations. So what are some uh, key points that people should consider before making this big step of starting a pension? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd try and get as much into that very tax effective structure as possible. So look at taking advantage of the non-concessional or no deduction rules where you can put in 110,000 a year or 330 in one big lump sum if you've sold an investment property. Remember the downsizing legislation for people over 65. There's a proposal to move that to 60, which would be very beneficial for a very large portion of the population. Yeah. And that needs to get passed. Now that's not legislation yet, so don't race out and start hurling that in because you won't meet the rules, but that's scheduled for 1 July 2022. Right. Um, but needs royal assent. Um, if you've got CSS, PSS, you're in a defined benefit scheme, maybe think about transferring money to a spouse's name um, and starting a pension in their name because a large portion of your pension may reach certain thresholds in relation to transfer balance caps and the amount of tax-free money that you can have, so keep that in mind. If you're gonna work again, use it as a funding mechanism. I don't really wanna go back and work five days a week, but if I took some pension and did three days, oh, that'd be great. Mm. Because people are found from I'm, I'm a big fan of the three-day so, week. <laughs> I'm trying, I tell you. <laughs> I just can't get it right. <laughs> I went the other way and tried to do 40 hours in, 30, in three days. You're making too many appointments, that's what you're doing. Um, so, you know, using the pension structure to be able to fund lifestyle choices. Well, I'll do three days or four days. You know, and that's why they created the transition to retirement legislation, which we'll talk about in an upcoming show. Um, use the money to pay off debts. Using tax-free money as a yeah. pension to pay off houses, kids' school fees, braces, cars whatever else you need to set up retirement so that you can limit your large capital outgoings down the track, that's really a good way to do it when you're wrapping up in your final working years. Think about having all of your tax effective income <coughs> in that pension structure so you can get a refund of franking credits, you can maximize the yield from assets. And if you're gonna to look to sell anything, if you've held CBA in your super fund for the last 15 years and you've got a huge capital gain sitting there, don't sell it until you're in pension phase because as I mentioned earlier, there's no capital gains tax in a pension where you're under the transfer balance cap. So if CBH, I think it was 103 today or 104, and if you paid 
six dollars for it many moons ago mm. think about selling it in pension phase yeah. so that you can maximize the return on your investment so they're some of the key things that i'd be thinking about when it comes to do i need to start one because there are a number of benefits that you can take advantage of that have nothing to do with funding the way that you live but you can get a lot of strategic benefit out of limiting earnings tax limiting capital gains tax and having access to funds that you could use for estate equalization gifting to the children paying off investment properties etc etc so it's it's a very flexible way of gaining access to the money that you've spent many many years accumulating on two double c it's nine minutes to five i'm with luke smith from envision financial we're talking finance today back with more in just a moment C camera live and with me in the studio today is Luke Smith from Envision Financial. We're talking finance and specifically today we're talking about how do we start a pension from our super fund, which of course is a very important step when you've decided to hang up the spurs and uh, either not work anymore or maybe not work as much. And of course that, uh, that pension phase uh, is very important for helping you to devise the rest of your, your lifestyle. So what are the key strategy tips when we're starting our pension phase? Yeah, so if we sort of recap before the break get as much in as you can within legislated limits and, and check that because it's it can get very very convoluted in light of recent indexation and, and yeah. certain trigger periods um, you can take the minimum but you can also take as much as you want and remember that the minimum's there just to meet the legislation requirements for everything to be tax-free as we mentioned before the break so take your minimum but remember you need what you need don't focus on just the minimum. If you need more than the minimum to live, then take it. You've spent a lot of time working to save to be able to have these choices and do the things you want to do. Well, let me put you up right there. I know there'll be some people who will be sitting there thinking to themselves, oh yes, but if I take too much, mm -hmm. I'm gonna run out before I die. Yeah, look, we get that one a lot. And, and I, I'd sort of come at that by saying, if we bring that, you use the car analogy, the speed limit's 100, <laughs> you do 160 and you get a ticket, there's a chance you're not getting out of that one. Similarly, if you do 40 mm -hmm. and hold too much cash and too much fixed interest, that can be just as dangerous because cash doesn't grow and you may be late driving at 40 kilometres an hour mm -hmm. getting where you're going. So I, I, I preface, you know, get a risk profile that's right for you so that you can address those sorts of things because it, it can be very daunting, but I think as people become comfortable with retirement and they see the income from their portfolio land in the bank account, and they see what they draw and they see how much it goes up and down, you can, you can make sure that with six to 12 months of pension income in cash, you future-proofed at least 12 months of earnings. So there's a number of strategies you can employ to try and have that peace of mind um, because I appreciate firsthand that it is daunting when you turn the income tap off and you know that that security of cash flow is gone. So it's it's all something that isn't new to somebody like me. Might be to you, not so much to me. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm learning at the moment is people that are getting older are not selling getting older very well. So <laughs> that's what I'm taking from meetings at the moment. Mm -hmm. But take the minimum, sell assets in a tax effective environment and avoid capital gains tax if you can. Um, use the contribution legislation, so non-concessional, downsizer, deductible limits. If you're in your last year of work, max out your deductible contributions. Look to use the bring forward legislation, which maximizes your deductions in the final year of work. And remember that you can take your income stream in a way that suits you. Don't just assume that it's fortnightly because your spouse has a PSS or CSS pension. You can take your income stream in any manner that suits the way that you want to live so that you've got as much flexibility as possible and if you do need chunks of cash for a new car or some new shoes, you can do that as well. So you've, you've got the ability to take what you want when you want. So where do we get more information? 02-6260-4749, numbers stay the same. Envisionfinancial.com that I use the website. We've got the Knowledge Centre there with a raft of technical material and some videos. We've got the podcast, The Strategy Stack of Luke Talks Money on iTunes and Spotify. And you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, Envision Financial Canberra where we've got all of the radio shows, you can watch them on your iPhone, pause it, take some notes, wind it back, and, and just see how much weight you and I are putting on regularly. So it's all there for everybody on every platform. Thanks for that. <laughs>
Luke Smith from Envision Financial. We'll catch you again next Friday. See you next Friday. <laughs> Luke Smith from Envision Financial. We'll be back again at the same time next week. It's about three minutes to five. News is next.